Melioidosis, Wikipedia article audio. Melioidosis is an infectious disease caused by a gram-negative bacterium, Burkholderia pseudomalii, found in soil and water. It is of public health importance in endemic areas, particularly in northeast Thailand, Vietnam, and northern Australia. It exists in acute and chronic forms. Signs and symptoms may include pain in chest, bones, or joints, cough, skin infections, lung nodules, and pneumonia. Signs and Symptoms Acute Melioidosis Chronic Melioidosis Diagnosis Prevention Post-exposure prophylaxis Vaccination Treatment Current treatment Surgical treatment Historical treatment Prognosis Biological warfare potential Epidemiology History Synonyms B. pseudomalii was previously classed as part of the Pseudomonas genus, until 1992, it was known as Pseudomonas pseudomalii. It is phylogenetically related closely to Burkholderia malii which causes glanders, an infection primarily of horses, donkeys, and mules. The name melioidosis is derived from the Greek melis meaning a distemper of asses with the suffixes oid meaning similar to and osis meaning a condition, that is, a condition similar to glanders. In the subgroup of patients where an inoculating event was noted, the mean incubation period of acute melioidosis was nine days. Patients with latent melioidosis may be symptom-free for decades, the longest period between presumed exposure and clinical presentation is 62 years. The potential for prolonged incubation was recognized in U.S. servicemen involved in the Vietnam War, and was referred to as the Vietnam Time Bomb. A wide spectrum of severity exists. In chronic presentations, symptoms may last months, but fulminant infection, particularly associated with near drowning, may present with severe symptoms over hours. Symptoms usually appear two to four weeks after exposure. There are four general types of infection including localized, pulmonary, blood-borne, or disseminated throughout the body. The type and location of the infection usually determines which symptoms appear first as well as which symptoms are more prominent. Patients with melioidosis usually present with fever. Pain or other symptoms may be suggestive of a clinical focus, which is found in around 75% of patients. Such symptoms include cough or pleuritic chest pain suggestive of pneumonia, bone or joint pain suggestive of osteomyelitis or septic arthritis, or cellulitis. Intra-abdominal infection do not usually present with focal pain, and imaging of these organs using ultrasound or computed tomography should be performed routinely. In one series of 214 patients, 27.6% had abscesses in the liver or spleen. B. pseudomalii abscesses may have a characteristic honeycomb or Swiss cheese architecture on CT. Regional variations in disease presentation are seen. Parotid abscesses characteristically occur in Thai children, but this presentation has been described only once in Australia. Conversely, Prostatic abscesses are found in up to 20% of Australian males, but are rarely described elsewhere. An encephalomyelitis syndrome is recognized in northern Australia. Patients with melioidosis usually have risk factors for disease, such as diabetes, thalassemia, hazardous alcohol use, or renal disease, 
and frequently give a history of occupational or recreational exposure to mud or pooled surface water. However, otherwise healthy patients, including children, may also get melioidosis. In up to 25% of patients, no focus of infection is found and the diagnosis is usually made on blood cultures or throat swab. Melioidosis is said to be able to affect any organ in the body except the heart valves. Although meningitis has been described secondary to ruptured brain abscesses, primary meningitis has not been described. Less common manifestations include intravascular infection, lymph node abscesses, pyopericardium and myocarditis, mediastinal infection, and thyroid and scrotal abscesses and ocular infection. Chronic melioidosis is usually defined by a duration of symptoms greater than two months and occurs in about 10% of patients. The clinical presentation of chronic melioidosis is protean and includes such presentations as chronic skin infections, chronic lung nodule, and pneumonia. In particular, chronic melioidosis closely mimics tuberculosis, and has sometimes been called Vietnamese tuberculosis. A definitive diagnosis is made by culturing the organism from any clinical sample because the organism is never part of the normal human flora. A definite history of contact with soil may not be elicited, as melioidosis can be dormant for many years before manifesting. Attention should be paid to a history of travel to endemic areas in returned travelers. Some authors recommend considering possibility of melioidosis in every febrile patient with a history of traveling to and slash or staying at endemic areas. A complete screen should be performed on all patients with suspected melioidosis. A definitive diagnosis is made by growing B. pseudomalii from any site. A throat swab is not sensitive but is 100% specific if positive, and compares favorably with sputum culture. The sensitivity of urine culture is increased if a centrifuged specimen is cultured, and any bacterial growth should be reported. Very occasionally, bone marrow culture may be positive in patients who have negative blood cultures for B. pseudomalii, but these are not usually recommended. A common error made by clinicians unfamiliar with melioidosis is to send a specimen from only the affected site instead of sending a full screen. Ashdown's medium, a selective medium containing gentamicin, may be required for cultures taken from non-sterile sites. Burkholderia cepatia medium may be a useful alternative selective medium in non-endemic areas, where Ashdown's is not available. A new medium derived from Ashdown, known as Francis medium, may help differentiate B. pseudomalii from B. cepatia and may help in the early diagnosis of melioidosis, but has not yet been extensively clinically validated. Many commercial kits for identifying bacteria may misidentify B. pseudomalii. A serological test for melioidosis is available but not commercially in most countries. A high background titer may reduce the positive predictive value of serological tests in endemic countries. A specific direct immunofluorescent test and latex agglutination, based on monoclonal antibodies, are used widely in Thailand, but are not available elsewhere. Cross-reactivity with B. thailandensis is almost complete. A commercial ELISA kit for melioidosis appears to perform well. But no ELISA test has yet been clinically validated as a diagnostic tool. It is not possible to make the diagnosis on imaging studies alone, but imaging is routinely performed to assess the full extent of disease. Imaging of the abdomen using CT scans or ultrasound is recommended routinely 
as abscesses may not be clinically apparent and may coexist with disease elsewhere. Australian authorities suggest imaging of the prostate specifically due to the high incidence of prostatic abscesses in northern Australian patients. A chest X-ray is also considered routine, with other investigations as clinically indicated. The presence of honeycomb abscesses in the liver is considered characteristic, but is not diagnostic. The differential diagnosis is extensive. Melioidosis may mimic many other infections, including tuberculosis. Person-to-person -person transmission is exceedingly unusual, and patients with melioidosis should not be considered contagious. Lab workers should handle B. pseudomalii under BSL-3 isolation conditions, as laboratory-acquired melioidosis has been described. In endemic areas, people are warned to avoid contact with soil, mud, and surface water where possible. Case clusters have been described following flooding and cyclones and probably relate to exposure. Other case clusters have related to contamination of drinking water supplies. Populations at risk include patients with diabetes mellitus, chronic renal failure, chronic lung disease, or an immune deficiency of any kind. The effectiveness of measures to reduce exposure to the causative organism have not been established. A vaccine is not yet available. After exposure to B. pseudomalii combined treatment with CO trimoxisole and doxycycline is recommended. Trovafloxacin and grupafloxacin have been shown to be effective in animal models. A vaccine is in the process of being developed, but is not yet licensed. There is a fear that when a vaccine is licensed, financial constraints will make the vaccination an unrealistic factor for many countries that are suffering from high rates of melioidosis. The treatment of melioidosis is divided into two stages, an intravenous high-intensity phase and an eradication phase to prevent recurrence. Surgical drainage is usually indicated for prostatic abscesses and septic arthritis, may be indicated for parotid abscesses, and is not usually indicated for hepatosplenic abscesses. In bacteremic melioidosis unresponsive to intravenous antibiotic therapy, splenectomy has been attempted, but only anecdotal evidence supports this practice. Prior to 1989, the standard treatment for acute melioidosis was a three-drug combination of chloramphenicol, CO trimoxisole, and doxycycline. This regimen is associated with a mortality rate of 80% and is no longer be used unless no other alternatives are available. All three drugs are bacteriostatic and the action of CO trimoxisole antagonizes both chloramphenicol and doxycycline. Without access to appropriate antibiotics, the septicemic form of melioidosis exceeds 90% in mortality rate. With appropriate antibiotics, the mortality rate is about 10% for uncomplicated cases but up to 80% for cases with bacteremia or severe sepsis. It seems certain that access to intensive care facilities is also important, and probably at least partially explains why total mortality is 20% in northern Australia but 40% in northeast Thailand. Response to appropriate antibiotic treatment is slow, with the average duration of fever following treatment being 5 to 9 days. Recurrence occurs in 10 to 20% of patients, but with CO trimoxisole eradication therapy, this can be reduced to 4%. While molecular studies have established the majority of recurrences are due to the original infecting strain, a significant proportion of recurrences in endemic areas may be due to reinfection, particularly after two years. Risk factors include severity of disease, choice of antibiotic for eradication therapy, 
poor compliance with eradication therapy and duration of eradication therapy less than 8 weeks. Interest in melioidosis has been expressed because it has the potential to be developed as a biological weapon. It is classed by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control as a Category B agent. B. pseudomali, like B. malii which causes glanders, was studied by the U.S. as a potential biological warfare agent, but never weaponized. The Soviet Union was reported to have also experimented with B. pseudomali as a biological warfare agent. Melioidosis is endemic in parts of Southeast Asia Laos, Singapore, Brunei, Malaysia, Burma, and Vietnam, China, Taiwan and Northern Australia. Flooding can increase its extent, including flooding in Central Australia. Multiple cases have also been described in Hong Kong and Brunei India, and sporadic cases in Central and South America, the Middle East the Pacific and several African countries. Although only one case of melioidosis has ever been reported in Bangladesh, at least five cases have been imported to the UK from that country. Recent news reports indicate B. pseudomali has been isolated from soil in Bangladesh, but this remains to be verified scientifically. This suggests that melioidosis is endemic to Bangladesh and that a problem of underdiagnosis or underreporting exists there. Most likely due to a lack of adequate laboratory facilities in affected rural areas. A high isolation frequency was found in East Saravan in rural Lao PDR distant from the Mekong River thought by the investigators to be the highest geometric mean concentration in the world. A statistical model indicated that the incidence will be 165,000 cases per year in 2016, with 138,000 of those occurring in East and South Asia and the Pacific. In about half of those cases, people will die. Northeast Thailand has the highest incidence of melioidosis recorded in the world. In Northeast Thailand, 80% of children are positive for antibodies against B. pseudomali by the age of 4, the figures are lower in other parts of the world. Melioidosis is a recognized disease in animals, including cats, goats, sheep, and horses. Cattle, water buffalo, and crocodiles are considered to be relatively resistant to melioidosis despite their constant exposure to mud. An outbreak at the Paris Zoo in the 1970s was thought to have originated from an imported panda. B. pseudomali is normally found in soil and surface water, a history of contact with soil or surface water is, therefore, almost invariable in patients with melioidosis, that said, the majority of patients who do have contact with infected soil suffer no ill effects. Even within an area, the distribution of B. pseudomali within the soil can be extremely patchy, and competition with other Burkholderia species has been suggested as a possible reason. Contaminated groundwater was implicated in one outbreak in northern Australia. Also implicated are severe weather events such as flooding tsunamis and typhoons. Based on whole genome sequencing, humans may play a role in moving B. pseudomali from place to place. The single most important risk factor for developing melioidosis is diabetes mellitus, followed by hazardous alcohol use, chronic kidney disease, and chronic lung disease. Other risk factors include thalassemia, occupation, and cystic fibrosis. The mode of infection is believed to be through either a break in the skin, or the inhalation of aerosolized B. pseudomali cells. Person-to-person -person spread has been described, but is extremely unusual. HIV infection does not predispose to melioidosis. The disease is clearly associated with increased rainfall, 
with the number of cases rising following increased precipitation. Pathologist Alfred Whitmore and assistant Krishna Swami first reported the disease among beggars and morphine addicts at autopsy in Rangoon, present-day Myanmar, in a report published in 1912. They distinguished it from glanders, a disease of humans and animals that is similar in presentation, but caused by a different microorganism. B. Sudomali, also known as the Whitmore bacillus, was identified in 1917 in Kuala Lumpur. Arthur Conan Doyle may have read the 1912 report before writing a short story that involved the fictitious tropical disease Topanula fever in a Sherlock Holmes adventure. <laughs>